Hi, Blast Pop here. My real name is Mark, a.k.a. Blast Pop. When I was a teenager in high school in 1979, me and my buddies in school used to play a lot of board war games and miniature games. When we were playing board war games, we were still learning the ropes of the way to do things and, and the efficient ways to do things, and we weren't always successful. When we were first starting out, we were playing war games, and we were rolling the dice, and a lot of times, you know, you roll the dice near the board. Oh, you know, we move the pieces. Well, let's fix that. Okay? And then somebody get a little rambunctious and roll the dice too close to the board, and it goes all over the pieces, and it makes a mess. And then you're constantly trying to fix the board and stuff. And it would, this would happen at least once per game, if not more. So back in 1980... I met my good friend, uh, still friends to this day, his name is Jeff, and he was a member of the Central Connecticut Wargaming Association, or the CCWA. Now, I went down to this club, and they had a brilliant innovation. They used to take the box covers for the, the bookcase games that Avalon Hill had, or Game Designers Workshop shop had, the Series 120, and this here box will do sufficiently. And we would do is this, they roll a dice and they throw them into the box. Beautiful. Prevents a lot of the problems of dice rolling onto your game. And that works most of the time, except my friend Jeff. He had a way of throwing the dice like this. And sometimes they'd end up in the box. You know, really nice. No, no worries. And there are other times where he throw them like that and they go flying in, flying out, hit the game board, or even go flying off the table and onto the floor having to be retrieved. So this is a good solution. And what this is, is my story of how I got to the dice tower. And so... I ran into another gentleman over the years. His name was Ray. And this was in the early 80s. And one of his favorite ways of rolling dice was to have a dice jar. So what you would do is you take whatever dice you needed and you roll them and throw them in, into the jar. Beautiful. I mean, except that if you throw it with too much vim and too much vigor, believe it or not, they could hit just right and kind of go flying and popping up. Also, after repeated use, I had a jar like this actually crack and break. And I uh, never thought that would happen, but it's the repeated stress, and you got stress fractures, and the stress fractures migrated. And there's nothing to stop this. There was no uh, stop cracks to prevented from cracking, and the whole thing collapsed on a game table one day. So, that quickly fell out of favor with me. So, in, in the next step, um, you had dice trays, which were a variation um, on the dice box. Now, this is a cheaply constructed box that held an electronic device, and I cut and glued in a piece of green felt. Works reasonably nice. And all you do is like the dice box, you just roll your dice, and you get your result. It's a lot quieter, it's not as noisy as the jars, or the table, or even the aforementioned dice box. Uh, some years on, when I started doing the Blast Pop series, I came upon this at the dollar store. It looked like at the time it might be a good dice roller, and it still kind of works. But over the past two or three years since I've had it, it is bent 
outward for no apparent reason. It wasn't storing anything of any consequence. I mean, yeah, you can still roll dice in it. And you still get a fair die roll. Wobbles. But I'll probably be using this for some other purpose. Some years ago, a friend of mine, Gary Stagliano, who used to own Father and Son's Hobby Shop in Manchester, Connecticut, who tragically passed away way before his time, showed me a dice tower that he came up with. Talk about cheap. This is made out of a used priority mailbox. And all you have to do is take an assembled priority mailbox and cut it from the, the bottom up the side and then add a front and then another piece that fits right into the hole and add your baffles inside. It's kind of hard to see. And then you construct it with tape. And in this case, I copying his design, uh, I added some um, um, additional reinforcement um, to use of some stickers, labeling stickers. And I've had this now for like 10 or 15 years. And it works reasonably well. Just throw it on the top. It comes out nicely. Stops. Makes a nice dice rolling sound. Seems to work with everything except for maybe the largest of dice. But then this was 15 minutes or so of work to manufacture. Definitely the low cost alternative. A few years later, I was at EllisCon, which is a small local gaming convention used by the high school, the Ellis Tech High School, to uh, raise money for their war game group to go to West Point. And they have, it's a small convention, they have a day of gaming and people sell their wares. And there's this one guy who is selling this dice tower. Again, it's out of cardboard. As it turns out, this gentleman worked for a packaging company. So they were looking for ways to increase their volume. And so he, he, he knew how to make the dies. So he actually made a die up for a corrugated dice tower. Now, what he, once, he was a big Axis and Allies fan. And what he did is he also sold um, the stickers that went on the side so you could have your Axis and Allies or squad leader or whatever. I, I think he was selling this for like 4 or $5, and I was interested, but I wasn't buying, but he knew I was pretty well connected in the Connecticut wargaming scene, so he gave me this for free to show my friends. Yeah, it, It's a nice dice tower. It rolls nice. Um, it's definitely cheap construction. It does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I haven't used it all that much because I'm partial to the one I, ma I manufactured myself. So there, there there's another type of dice rolling uh, device, in this case a dice tower. Now, um, when my son was in middle school, early middle school, he was in an art class. And in art class, they have you create pottery and they, they kiln dry it and blast it and paint it. And my son's kind of broke a little bit, but because it was my son's and my wife absolutely loves anything my son ever created, he saved this item. And it had a problem, and you can see that it's got some cracks in there. So, I mean, you can't use it to have your cereal, and it's kind of a little imbalanced. But surprisingly, we were cleaning up around the house, and we refound this again. And my son, who's um, nearly 20, didn't want any part of it because he thought it wasn't his best work. And, well, maybe artistically it isn't. But by God, it actually makes a decent dice roller. You just take it and you throw it and you get a nice fair die roll. If, if you, only if you kind of like put it at the edge and let it roll. A nice die roll. And if you throw it, you chuck it in, it might stay in and it might not. But... I like it, and I, I've been using it lately for some of my games, and it seems to work reasonably well. Another homebrew idea. 
uh, for those looking for a cheaper alternative nowadays given the COVID virus and ways to save money but yet continue your hobby and uh, expand your horizons I suppose. Then uh, something what I've been using too uh, these are um, from a fast not a well, fast food restaurant or if you get like a Stouffer's um, pot or bowl with your mashed potato and chicken and corn and so on and so forth I've saved a couple of these over time. Not only are they good storage for like putting dice in and stuff or other wargaming components or just to quickly clean up your table or throw your counters in or something. It also can be used in a pinch as a dice roller. It's not perfect, but gives you the idea. When one of the local um, craft shops that my wife was um, a customer decided to close up she had me go in with her to help carry her, her sale items that she purchased before the store went out of business well always looking for wargaming type materials and things I did find one thing that day and it was a, a dice jar uh, basically it's <laughs> Original purpose was the old hook candles or or grains or some kind of nice decorative thing to put on, on on a on a shelf or or what have you, but I saw beyond that and saw the potential of using this for when I play ASL. Um, you can have your colored dice and choose the colored dice you need. Roll the dice and read your results. Now on the camera, it's harder to read and see what the results are. But nonetheless, you get a, a good fair result. I like the clinking sound, and I use it from time to time. It's especially good if I have, I'm playing in a very limited area, and I don't want the dice flowing too far, flying, high flying, and making a mess. So this is a good alternative, and or I like playing some ASL, as I had previously mentioned. Um, and then... Uh, Likewise, when my son was younger, I saved a few of these Gerber jars. And here you have a covered die roller, which I assume if you use too much, it's kind of a thin walled glass. Eventually may uh, break like the one I mentioned earlier in this video. And then finally, uh, I've been working in my basement and my son's been helping me. And one of the things we ran across was a box of Legos and actually a fairly big box of Legos and you always see these people going to conventions or people with other videos of making their own um, dice towers out of Lego so well this past Sunday I, I sat down and was playing with it and came up with a design and tested it and found one that worked reasonably well it's not perfect it sometimes the dice do get a little bit stuck um, by not going out into the tray but I created my own Lego dice tower. So you take your two dice, and I've got a couple baffles in there. And I, I, they're probably not as big as they need to be, but I also wanted the area for the dice to be big enough so it can handle a variety of dice. And so basically take it here, and you roll the dice, and there you get your result. I do like the clinky sound that it makes when you roll the dice. And again, it's not working the best right now. You have to move the, the dice tower to sometimes read the results. And sometimes you miss. But it was a fun little project. Yeah, I got a 10. And uh, so just another option. And reimagine what I already have here. So this has basically been the low cost dice tray, dice box, dice tower video by Glass Pop. Uh, all the various iterations of the things I've come up and used through the years. This is Mark, aka Glass Pop. Please like, comment, 
and subscribe. Bye.